Hello again, I'm Barnaby Slater, this is Spurred On and a new weekly show we've got called Transfer Tottenham. That didn't take a lot of thinking of, believe it or not. I've got Tom Edwards with me. Now Tom, let me just get this right, you are the sports social media editor at The Telegraph, is that right? Correct. Correct, Amanda. How is it over there in the big world of sports journalism? It's great. I mean, being social media, I don't tend to leave the office a great deal, but it's wonderful. Yeah, very well, good. Well, thank Enjoy you for coming much. all this way. Most importantly, though, I should mention Tom is a Spurs fan. Why wouldn't he be? Is the main question. So, Tom, we're going to talk to you about uh, the kind of transfer rumours, the mill. Things going on. Are we going to buy any players? Uh, we've got, of course, Kevin Vimmer in. Uh, he's the first one. Classic four million Spurs early summer buy. Yeah. What do you What do you know about him? What do you make of him as a signing? I think it was quite a shrewd move. I mean, it's it's going back to, you know, the Levy philosophy of buying young, buying cheap, and you know the potential sell on value. I mean, his stats look quite good. I think he's obviously been bought. So I mean, I, I think Potts wants to mould these young players. So mm -hmm. you can't be too much into mm -hmm. into the stats that you see. Um, because obviously Mitchell's got his black box of, of metrics, which That's is going right. to be far more than anything on the internet. We're trusting Paul Mitchell at the moment. We're trusting we him. Yeah. Bring us some Lalanas, bring us some Schneiderlins, make it happen. Um, Absolutely. What I would say uh, about Vim, I don't want to dampen any hopes, any spirits, but uh, my cousin lives in Germany, okay. uh, in Good. Bielefeld. Uh, they have a club there. And uh, I, I asked him to do a little bit of scouting on Vimmer. And the only thing he said to me was that all the people in Germany are surprised that, in his words, and he's a Chelsea fan, that a big English club came into, in for him so soon. That could be an interesting thought. It could be, well, I mean, that's what Mitchell's there for, isn't it? Is to pick out the diamonds in the rough that other people aren't, that other people aren't seeing. So yeah. hopefully he's done a good job. Yeah, let's hope so. Okay, yeah. so we're going we're gonna to talk about some of the things, some of the rumours that, that won't go away. My favourite player, so I have to talk about him first, Nabil Bentaleb. And the contract situation, so I should say, uh, Tom, I'm sure you know this already, uh, it's come out today in the press that uh, his agent has started talking. Jabber, 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 jabber. And he's starting to do the typical old thing of, uh, you know, Spurs aren't willing to pay him what a standard Premier League player is earning. And that's why uh, he's kicking up a bit of fuss, refusing to sign the contract. And um, he's saying that other clubs are wanting to talk to him. You know, what, what do you kind of imagine is happening there, really? I th well, I think that he wants to bring Bentaleb up to the same sort of level as uh, you know Harry Kane and Eriksson, and I think they're currently not prepared to do that. I mean, they should be. I think he's a great player for mm -hmm. us. I mean, Poch obviously loves him. Um, but the yeah, best, you know, the it's best just thing agents. That, the it, best thing that came out of Tim Sherwood, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, well, yeah. Like him, him and <laughs> yeah. Kane, him and Kane. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I think Sherwood did lots of lots of great things for Spurs. I don't. I, I'm not, Controversial. I'm not too anti Tim. Well, no, I, think, I, I, I agree. I, I actually academy, agree. I think I he did agree. a great job. Yeah, yeah, I think you know, you just look at the players that have come through. I think. You know, it probably was a bit out of his depth when he moved into the big job, but at the academy, I think he did, he did fantastically well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bentaleb, I think you know, it's agents. This is their this is their time, isn't it? You know, yeah, it really it's, is. it's like the end of the court case for lawyers. It's when they really come into their own and start stirring the pot. And I mean, you know, the thing about agents is they're there to make money for their players, aren't they? That's so, right. I mean, that's what he's, that's what he's trying to do. I just hope that Levy doesn't get too levy about yeah. it. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, how do you think the standoff will end, you know? Hopefully we'll just give him a, give him a, I'd give give him, him the daily ones. I'd give him whatever he wants. I'd I give, so great. would I. I would give him, you know, if the rumours are right, I'd give him the 40 grand a week, you know, which is apparently what, unbelievably, what Ericsson is on, what Kane is on. I know. Uh, but I'd give it to him, you know, in a five-year deal, six-year deal, and just say, you know, you could be our captain in a couple of years' time. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Okay, the other one that won't go away and uh, similarly distressing, Hugo Lloris. Hugo, 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 Hugo. Do you think it's, uh, you know, if, if De Gea... I mean, a few things I wanted to ask, actually. So, firstly, you know, all the talk is that De Gea to Madrid is a done deal. Benitez has come in, you know, it's been done behind Benitez's back, even. Is that, do you think, as much of a, a, a shoe-in? Because if it is, it seems like a natural for Lloris then to go to Man United. But I'm wondering if it is such a shoe-in. I'm not sure it is such a shoe-in. I'm not sure. I, you know, you... Yeah, you, I, you know, you hear that... Until it's done, I, I, I'm not going to say it is a shoe-in because, I don't know, I think Man United would be very keen to keep him. And I think he is a better goalie than Lloris. And I don't think, I know that's controversial yeah, in saying no, itself, well, but, well. I, you know, it's marginal, but I think he is. Um, and I really don't think Man United will want to start bargaining with us for Lloris because mm. they'll end, probably end up paying more for him 
than Raul will for, for De Gea. I mean, they're talking about 30 million for De Gea. That sounds incredibly low to me. That's a contract. Uh, it is, but he's a year left on this contract, whereas True. Hugo's got longer. He's so got a long time. Yeah, exactly. So, so there you go. So they'll, they'll probably end up paying more for him. I don't think they're going to want to do that. If they so ended up they paying, will... you know, getting 30 for De Gea and having to pay 40 for Lloris, then I think United fans will be up in arms. And also, yeah. you know, we haven't, uh, they haven't, uh, well, Spurs haven't sold a big player to an English club since Berbatov. No, and uh, no. and that was that's the one where Alex Ferguson came out in his autobiography and said um, Daniel Levy is an interesting man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he said they'd never is. buy another player off Spurs yeah. in his time. Certainly. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't think anyone likes negotiating with Levy. So I think, you know, I'm not too confident that we'll have Lloris next season. And if Madrid get to here, then I think eventually. Lloris will go. I do think that chain reaction is, is fairly nailed on. And if that chain but, reaction weren't to happen, though, do you think there's anywhere else Lloris could end up at? PSG, maybe? Or I don't think so. He doesn't want to go to PSG, does he? Not from, not from what I've read. Okay. Um, so, uh, no. I think it will be Man United or he'll be with us next season. I don't think he's unhappy at Spurs. This is the thing. It's not like he's been agitating for a move. No. He had a, an interview in uh, Le Quip the other day, and it was just incredibly ambiguous. You know, it wasn't sort of yeah. stirring... Or agitating for a move at all it was kind of he didn't really say anything yeah all he know. said was i think i'm right in saying all he said was um you know i just have to think about myself yeah you know, I, it was you like can, yeah you can spin I, that i think and ways. then when the season starts i'm committed to playing football or so yeah, yeah. you know it's i'm it's, committed to the project it's, well it's, yeah you know if you were spinning it the other way you'd say Lloris committed to the project exactly you know, so. and i think i think he's happy in in london i think he's happy at tottenham you know the, the most of the key players seem quite happy with the you know, with, with the philosophy mm -hmm. that we hear so much about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's by any means nailed on. Um, and I think they will have a very hard time getting him, they United. Um, and it would go to the very last minute of the it transfer. It would, yeah. Then. And we'd all, be comp we'd all be, like, crying by the end of it. Yeah. And also, another point on that is I think um, if he does go, I, I think Vorm is a, a very good goalie. And I think, you know, he had that error against uh, Leicester. Leicester. Mm. I was there, that, I was right behind the goal at that game, and it was abysmal. Um, but broadly, I think Vorm's a very good goalie, you know. Yeah. And I also think uh, when, when he's played, our, our back four has looked well organised, and I think that's sometimes something that we can kind of lack. Obviously, our, our defence is, is shocking currently. But yeah, I, I, I don't think it would be the biggest disaster in the world okay, if he does. So go. a layer of positivity there, some yes, positivity always. to you... even if Hugo were to go. Um, so the other one that seemed not to go away, I thought it had gone away is uh, your man Konoplyenka from Dnipro. Yes. Now, uh, he is available on a free transfer. Uh, it strikes me as odd that none of the kind of big clubs, you know, top five, top six, seem to be willing to take a punt on him. Yeah. Um, you know, because it, it strikes me that they should just be, you know, go and snap him up. What's, what's the worst that can happen? But obviously, they're assigning on fees and big wages to... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it seems like the, the Konoplyanka thing has been kicking around for years now, right? I, I remember... Um, when he played very well against us and everyone was talking about us, you know, signing him up, you know, soon after that. Um, yeah, and Liverpool have been after him for a while. Liverpool supposedly. have apparently been after him for a while, yeah, but they haven't got him either. Um, so it, it seems like a strange one. And you're right, it doesn't seem like there's any big clubs after him. Um, Stoke were one that seemed like they were after him, who clearly aren't a, a huge club. And yeah. if Stoke are confident of, of, of signing him, which uh, they are, according to some reports, how credible they are, I don't know. Um, it would kind of indicate that maybe he's not all he's cracked up to be. Yeah, it's uh, interesting actually. Stoke. I mean, just you know, a bit of a, a tangent, but they seem to be buying those kind of uh, players who are you know a bit of pace out wide and a bit more skill than when we used to. They, you know, they've up, got Anatovic, him, uh, your man Bojan. You know, very unstoky players. Yeah. Okay, so the kind of Pianka thing. Fine. You yeah. think it's likely, unlikely? Oh, I mean, it, I, I mean, it's been kicking around for so long, and so many sort of disparate sources that yeah. don't seem it's hugely. There doesn't seem to be anything at the bottom of it, as far as I can see. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's completely up in the air. I'm, I'm unlikely, I think, and the, the fact that it's been kicking around since pre Mitchell and pre Poch, yeah. and it's still kicking around now, kind of makes me think maybe yeah. not, because you know they've got a very specific way of identifying. Do you know, do you know the other one that's just like that, which I never understand, is uh, Jay Rodriguez. Jay yeah. Rodriguez, who has just had a cruciate ligament injury. Yeah, for, for like ever. Forever. And every 
single transfer window, it's like, oh, Spurs are about to sign Jay Rodriguez. And yeah. I just, you know, that to me is the epitome of paper talk, surely. Because why would a club, you know, with someone as frugal as Levy in charge as well, take a risk on a player who hasn't played football in over a year? Yeah, oh, well, I certainly hope we don't. It would be, it would be a risk. Uh, you know, he was great, um, but it, it would be a huge risk, you're right. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't see that happening. Yeah. J-Rod will stay put, I think. Okay, I'm just going to chuck one more at you before okay. we go into a bit of a left field uh, one. Um, the man Ayu from Marseille, some more rumours have started circling yeah, around today. Yeah, it seems to be kicking around. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's another one of those, it's so difficult to tell at this, at this sort of point um, because there's so much speculation. Um, you know, some sources are saying uh, that we're not interested at all. Others are saying it's nearly tied up. So it's, it's a very difficult one to gauge. It looks pretty good. I think, you know, looking at the stats um, that I've seen, he doesn't look hugely better than what we've already got mm -hmm. in terms of his assist numbers, his forward passes numbers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, key passes numbers. It doesn't look incredible. Um, but you, again, as we were saying earlier, it may be one that they've kind of identified some metrics that they think he's, he's really good at. He's, he's very fast, I think, and that's yeah. you know, obviously I important. I find it strange uh, that a lot of these rumours are about players who are, you know, have no experience in the Premier League, where Pochettino has yeah. come out and said that's what he wants in his players. Yes. So, I mean, I dare say there'll be a couple of those, but I'm tempted to look more at those kind of trippier signing rumours, yeah. the, the ones where, you know, even Morales to some degree, where, where it looks like it might have a bit more kind yeah. of real yeah. depth to it. I thought it, Ing, Ings would have, been a, would have been a good one for us. Um, it's, you know, not going to happen now, I don't think. No. Um, but yeah, again, you know, it's, it, uh, that's, that's been a, a huge problem for us. You know, I don't want to mention Bobby, poor old Bobby, but, poor old Bobby, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, it's, happened, it's happened before, isn't it? We've done it more times than I care to remember um, signing players with no Premier League experience and it clearly is important. Yep, but one person who we did that to and it did work out and is now available on a free transfer again is Dimitar Berbatov. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Dimitar Berbatov, I would kind of like to sign him up on a free oh, who just to have him back and that kind of swagger, a little bit of arrogance, yeah. you know, smoking a fag in the changing rooms Absolutely. afterwards. Having back, obviously he left in a bit of a cloud, but you know we can forgive him that. So did Jurgen, you know. So did Jurgen. We could have Dimitar back. Any chance of that at all? Like, what do you think? Never, never in a million years. I mean, I would love it. I, I love Dimitar Berbatov, uh, and you know he's just he's pure class, isn't he? But he's never going to fit in with the high press. Scored you know, Harry that, scored that goal against Arsenal this year yeah. in the Champions yeah, League. Yeah, he did, didn't he? And that was a beautiful moment, wasn't it? And he's he, he scored that. I mean, he scores some beautiful goals, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you know, Harry Kane. It's you know, some matches he's covered like twelve kilometers in, in a game. You, you know, you'd be lucky if Berbatov covers twelve meters yes, in a game. Yes, it's true. It's, it's true. It's just it's never going to work. He's never going to press from the front, is he? I would love it dearly to happen, but yeah, I can't see it. Sadly. It's true. We'll just have to be happy with the fact that he scored that goal against the Woolwich yes. in that Champions we League will. game. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, apart, I think we've pretty much gone through everything. It's been a pleasure to have you here. We'll see you again soon. That was Transfer Tottenham. What did you think? Who do you want to see coming into the club? Who is the Deadwood that you know must leave? Tell us in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at SpurredOnTV, and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Now this week, team bonding is the theme. Ooh, harmony, kumbaya, all is one.